part two. <laughs> Things are about to get a little. Okay? Just warning. Okay. You stop that. Me getting shot. Now, certain things happen in life where there's only one explanation. God puts people in positions to where He puts His how can I say this? He puts the people that he's testing or chastising in certain situations to be delivered so they can understand that it was only by the grace of God that they were delivered. I'm going to just say it plain, okay? I tried to speak a little louder because uh, the last one was a little low and people couldn't really, uh, I couldn't really hear myself playing it back, but plug in some headphones or something. You know what I'm saying? It was mostly personal. You know, people can get an understanding of my background part of it. And grow to know me. Or grow to know Yah through me. Or God. Oh yeah, sure. Or Jesus Christ. Now, I stopped on the third bullet for a reason, which actually was the first bullet. <clears throat> this happened at a club called Club Boss, August the 23rd, 2014, off of 1960 in T.C. Jester in Houston, Texas. For those of you who wants to research and pull up some things, you know what I'm saying? When the shots rang out, I was the first one shot. I think a total of six people got shot. There were, uh, I don't want to exaggerate, because sometimes I say 40 shells, sometimes I say 30. I don't remember the exact number, but I know it was over 20, 25. I know of that. You know, it was multiple guns being shot. Over 25, 30 shells were picked up at the crime scene of a random shooting in which... I was the very first one to be shot. Conspiratorial? Mm, who knows? I do. And others do as well. But that's not the amazing part. The amazing part is I didn't even know I got shot through time. When the first one hit, I felt that. I felt it on this side. I didn't know I got shot on this side. I didn't know I got shot twice in my legs, one right underneath my butt. Sit your ass down, but you know, that's God's humor. But in the midst of it, it's like it was slow motion. You can hear the whistles from the... Anybody know about a whistle? You know, people at war, if you ask anybody that's been in some shit, they'll tell you about the whistle of a bullet. Ask them if I'm lying. They ever had one come that close. Most people that hear that whistle, that's the last thing they hear. But, I say that to say... When I made it over to the safe section, once I figured out which direction the where gunshots were coming from, because I was there for a second. I got hit, and I was squatted down, looking, trying to figure out where was these shots coming from, because I didn't want to run into the direction of them. So I was, you know, my adrenaline was up. You know, that could account for me not feeling the two in my, in my butt or my leg, you know, one leg, one butt. But... Long story short, the 
if you ever want me to explain the full story, I can. But I want to explain to you the power of our creator and what he has done for me to make me look and say, hold on, man. I got to listen. I got to say thank you to somebody somewhere. Because not only did I make it across, thank God for my best friend at the time, whom I've not lost, but have been separated from due to my lack of trust in the Father and my own personal problems I was going through in which the devil came in and had his demons to work and, you know, make happen. But I thank God for that dude. Because I, I was on the phone with him. I called him. Yo, D, I got shot, bro. He was there with me. I sent him to go get my car because I, Mr. Casanova, was walking two girls back to the car. How did my, how did somebody in particular know all those details when they came up years later? I don't know, but uh, that's another story. Anyway, but yeah, I was walking two girls back to the car. We were getting ready to come back to my place. As soon as I put them say to their car that's when the shots rang out you know so it was kind of yeah but i got shot well the shots were still ringing out when i was on the phone with my bro like yo i got shot fam where you at i'm right across the parking lot bro the other parking lot across, I'm right over here dog he drove my car over there we on shot number you know, I was the first one. So we on shot number 15, maybe, you know. Yeah. We ain't even halfway through Fallujah. <laughs> you know. So he pulls up like a chief. I see him. I go, you know, from the grass. And he pulls up by the street. Then I go into the parking lot. I run down, you know. And I, um, <laughs> let me tell you how, how, how freaking, how the mind works. You know, I just got a Honda Civic, me and my girlfriend at the time, which is now my son's. My son had not been born yet. This is the part that hurts me the most because I could have been taken away from even knowing my son. My son could have been taken away from even knowing his father. But... I open the door and instead of hopping in the car, I'm like, man, I'm going to walk on the side. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't want to get blood on my new seat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But uh, before that, I was asking the guy, I was like, yo, you know, before I, I told my partner, I was like, yo, like, you know, I'm over here whoop de whoop, and I asked another dude that was hiding behind a car with the other two girls that was screaming and hollering. I had to tell me why because they were still shooting, looking for people. You know, to shoot. They were shooting, you know, and they re you feel bullets stop, gun stop, and then reload, shoot again. You need to stop screaming. You know what I'm saying? So I'm asking the dude, you know, that's when I realized I got shot three times because I was like, yo, like, how bad is it? What, what is it? He looked, he's like, uh, you know, which, what? I was like, bro, how many times? He's like, bro, you got you got three shots. You got three bullets. You got three holes in you. And I was like, what? I was asking him how bad is my back look or am I fucked up or something, you know? He was like, no, nah, bro, you got one right here on your arm and then two down right, right here by your leg. I was like, damn. So I got shot three times. I'm still on the phone with my partner. Mind you, nevertheless, he pulls up. I don't want to get the seats wet. <laughs> Bloody. It's a funny thing about that, too, I'm going to get to. I run along the side of the car across the street to where the club was entrance, the entrance was, and where I, I seen security guards, and, you know, I figured if, when the police come, that's going to be the place they go, you know what I mean? Because the police that was there, 
they were hot. <laughs> That's how many shots were ringing off. The, the police that was there, I don't blame them. Shit, I'm not risking my life. Just go out there and gun battle. When I'm just here securing a club. They don't pay these guys enough for that. So, I salute, uh, you know, police officers, the good ones who, you know, put their life on the line for our, you know, protection and ones who uphold the Constitution, whoop, whoop, that's another one. Shit, we're not going to go into that. But once I made it across the street, I laid down and was like, oh, okay. I laid on the ground finally, and that's when I started feeling a lot of the pain in my shoulder. I thought my shoulder was fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Once I finally made it inside the ambulance, the ambulance came. Something amazing happened. I had my first real revelation, you know, where I was like, dang, you know? Um, I'm staring, anybody that's been in the back of an ambulance, they know about that big bright light at the top. I don't know why they have that there because if you're dying, that just says walk into the light, go die to me. You know, that's why I looked up and I seen that. I was like, shit, is that the light that they talk about? <laughs> but it was just really a bright ass light at the top. They need to move that shit. Just a suggestion. But now you got these three paramedics. There are over the top you see I see these three heads. It's, it was like a movie. See the big white light, and you see three faces. And then I asked, you know, we we're they're going fast, and the guy looks down at me. He goes, "Man, sorry that we're you know bumping around and stuff because, um, you know, we're just trying to get you there. You know, sorry it's so bumpy." And I'm like, "Hey, man, how does it look? You know, am I going to be all right?" He was like, "Man, it, you, you're going to be all right. You know, he was like, man, I don't see how you're not losing that much blood. You know." I didn't lose when I got my clothes. I did not lose. It looked like I only dripped two drops of blood. And I got, I didn't bleed at all from like my legs. I had a string of blood going down on my legs and then on my back. I didn't have none. They cut my pants off and my shirt off and I was butt naked on TV going into the ambulance. My mother recorded it. So, at that point, I'm already knowing who my, you know, I'm already knowing that I'm covered, you know. I already had this calmness about me while it was going on. I knew I would be okay. And when he told me that, it just kind of verified, like, yo, you blessed. So I looked up. I was like, hey, man, y'all could pop wheelies. Y'all could do a four wheel. I don't care. Just, you know, get me there. You know, if I'm going to be all right, I'm cool. So they laughed, and we laughed, and I made it to the hospital where they told me that they weren't going to take this bullet out that was still lodged in my shoulder because it could cause nerve damage. Mind you, I went to Bentop, uh, which I learned was one of the best places for a gunshot trauma, you know what I mean? And they couldn't do nothing. Police coming out asking me for ballistics, and you know, I was like, "Say, man, I ain't even seen a, I ain't even seen a doctor yet. You come here asking me about, you know what I'm saying? Taking my fingerprints and, you know, ballistics and stuff, you know, DNA and all that. Like, for what? I gave it to him. First mistake. Don't offer up your DNA. There's a code in there that's sacred." They found out something that day, and I did too. So, they didn't take it out. The very next time I went in there at about 2 something a.m., right as the sun came up, I checked myself out of there. My girlfriend at the time, who, mind you, had been a rider up until that point. I didn't have no reason not to trust it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know a lot of the things that I found out later on, which I won't disclose with you guys. I will just talk about the good things. Because there's more years of me being, you know, us being 
satisfied and happy with one another, then there was a bus being at odds. So, in respect of that, I did not dabble into the rest. What I understand was, she rolled me out of the hospital. She sat with a nigga, changed the nigga bandage sometimes, even though I was back up on my feet in no time. You know, she was there, you know what I'm saying? That's what opened up my eyes, like, nigga, you need to stop tripping out here, you know what I'm saying? Chasing after all this bullshit and wondering what this and that is. That's the start of me getting my actions in my life in accordance to what I knew was true. First blow to say. George is thinking about changing his life. He's thinking about stop sleeping with so many girls. He's thinking about getting married. He's thinking about what I don't want him thinking about. This is safe. Now, going through that process, a lot of things transpired. You know, I was in sin. Satan tried to take my life from me. God bless me. I never turned away from God ever in my life. I knew that there was power that I did not understand. So that's the grace that covered me. All you have to do is have faith the size of a mustard seed. And he would show you grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. While surely grace and mercy follow. It follows. That's scripture. Even though I didn't deserve grace and mercy, it followed me. It had been following me my whole entire life. I've been through some shit. Look at me go. Do I look 33? Damn. God will preserve those. And which trust and believe in him, he will preserve you. Let's get into, let's fast forward. We're going to get into this paper. I haven't even, you know, started. My studies and everything have brought me to a point to where I wholeheartedly ask God to fill me with uh, I wanted to turn that around and show you guys but never mind they really don't matter what they want to do is stop me from doing what I'm doing just for you know to purposes it's two cars it's two, it's two, it's two of them mine but anyway now, um, they want to be famous, so now they're reversing. <laughs> they're reversing to see who that is sitting here. Watch this. I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna let them see me there, so they'll know who it is. Right there, it's me. It's me. You know what I mean? It's me. There you go. Are you happy? You happy? Okay. Now. Anyway. Turn it back that way. Um, a few days ago, I was. I asked uh, Father God for to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It happened. Unquestionably, it happened. Okay? Now, growing up, I've always heard about this, and I'm going to end it when I talk about that. And we're going to go into a, the next chapter. 
It's gonna be 30 minutes every time, 30 or so minutes each part. Because I want you guys to have a clear understanding and go walk through it with me. You understand? So, I ask them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the Holy Spirit? It's something you, it's hard to put into words, but, which is why I don't think a lot of people explain it to us, or they explain and make it seem like some ghost or something you know. It is a power that comes down up on you. If someone is explaining it to you and it, they don't describe it as coming down up on you, they're not talking about the same Holy Spirit. Because God told me to explain this to you guys, which is why I'm going through it like this. He, I have it written down of certain points that he wants me to make. One of them is to tell you, explain how it felt. That way, you won't be misconstrued. First of all, when it starts happening, because I was I I understood that it was Satan at first trying to deceive me into thinking I was receiving something from God, in which it wasn't. And God discerned that for me. First thing, if you are has your head up and you're positioning up while you think you are getting the Holy Spirit, you're wrong. The Holy Spirit comes down upon you. It causes you to have a bow, a bow. You are at your core bowing. It brings you down. It comes from the top of your crown. And it's, it's like, I didn't feel it too much from the bottom of my feet, but I knew that at the middle part of my stomach, solar plex area, there was like a decimal point feeling. Okay, because as it was, as I was, you know, it crunches you, but it comes down upon you. It is a process. A process. It's not something you just, whoo, hold the spirit. No. That shit comes down upon you. It feels you. And you can, it's like a meter that. Feel it, and it's that last little part. Oh, that last little part, the last fill up, the last little, whoop, the last, you know, trying to get the last of it all the way to fill up something. You're filling it up, you're not leaving none of it without, which means that if you have anything in there. That should not be or a part in there that's unfulfilled then it needs to put a little pressure you feel pressure is my point it's a point it's only thing I can describe it is is a decimal point I could feel it push through the last decimal it pushes your body to a point. You're conformed. You are bowing. You you are having a feeling of overpowering. A part of a feeling of you are. It's a power that you will understand once it arrives upon you. Now, I've always, uh, when I prayed, I had strong parents before this and all of that. But I've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, ever. I'm sure of that. God gives, gave me a sign. He has a certain power about himself. It's a covering that Heavenly Father got the rain from getting me and blowing on my electronics, Father God, help me to give your message the way it should be. 
and the precious sun can be like my friend a little bit. Now, because it's raining pretty hard and the water is hard enough, you know, I, I want to be able to sit out here and do this for you guys because I feel uncomfortable doing it in a house and I feel better outside. Anyway, now, I'm, uh, I don't, I don't know if he gives everyone their own special type of sign to validate their prayers or their understandings, but for me, <laughs> it's a wind. The wind, he told me to, he told me to describe the direction in which the Lord's mercy comes from, his grace, covering. I get assured by winds. Can't help it. I didn't just fly that up there. I'm just telling you. Now, and usually when I'm speaking something that's good or the Lord wants me to, I get chills and I get a wind, or I will ask for the wind to verify that what I'm doing is something that is His will. And if I feel that, it's something that energizes me because it comes right in me. Now, it's a wind that don't go counterclockwise. It goes, He told me to explain that it goes. Clockwise. For me, I felt it like a picture of an ant on a piece of paper, and you're taking uh, your hand, but your hand is is transparent, so it can go through the ant, but it's still the size of your hand. Okay, picture four of them lined in a circle. And it's like a fan going counterclockwise. It felt like a wall of energy. A wall of energy. When I asked God to verify for me what I had just felt in the Holy Spirit, you know what I mean? Show me your covering. Let me know what your covering feels like. He gave to me a wall. I could feel it move through. It was a it was a win, but it was a special. Put it like that because I asked for a special request, and it came from behind me. It felt like I asked him to cover my surroundings, and it felt like a wall. And I I knew it was just covering my whole. I'm talking about it's nothing like it it wasn't something like I could see a flashing light or some UFO type shit which by the way are demonic entities there is no UFOs there is no we didn't go to the moon there is the earth is flat we are in an enclosed system the Sun and the moon circles within the enclosed system the stars hang down from the firm just saying to decipher a lot of that. There's going to be great delusions coming on this work. We're almost out of time. Which is the main course and part of this message is we're almost out of time. Not we're. We're as a human race, but I'm somewhere where you need to be. Not because I'm better than you. Not because I'm more special than you. It's simply because I didn't give up on you. Simply. Through my trials and all the stuff I've been through, I didn't give up faith. See. It goes clockwise. Hmm. I already said if your head is up, you're saying you're wrong God. Booyah, first page down. Let's go. Second page. Oh, I'm glad I just said it with uh, a lot of sorrowful souls. That's my wind. Say it's because of the rain. I don't care. Whatever. Did you see my paper blow up the first time when I was just describing myself? The first part? Nope. A lot of sorrowful souls are going to be thrown into the kids. God told me that you have to really be delivered 
before he comes down and actually talks and show himself to you because you won't believe him. You won't. He'll be wasting his time. That's for his words. He says he's going to give you up to unclean uh, and not going to give you up. A lot of you have been giving, given up to unclean spirits and demonic presences because you fail to think they're to they really be delivered for him too. You fail to seek true deliverance, pretty much. Okay? You're leaning on your own understanding instead of letting your word and your heart guide you to what the true message is. God speaks to us, but for him to show you, to prove himself to you, you have to be worthy. You have to show yourself approved. He says if he comes down and show himself to every little person that calls on his name, he will never get nothing done. Everybody thinks they talk to God. Everybody thinks they deserve it. None of them are willing to put in the work or go through the trials that it takes to be able to work. Very few. So you're giving up to unclean spirits and your own doctrines and doctrines of demons. And I am the, the God. Uh, yes, you are made in God's image and you have power to do a lot of things. But you are not the creator of the power. If you are God, Yes, you are a God. You have God within, but you are not the God. Who created you? What came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken didn't create the egg if the egg came first. The egg didn't come from a chicken if the chicken came first. I'm just saying, think about it. Very simply put. All right? People are gonna laugh. People laugh and taunt me all the time. I have people who listen to me and they, you know, try to stop and, and try to stop my shine, man. But look, this message needs to be get out and by the grace of God, I pray that nothing happens to this file or nothing because strange stuff happens with devices and information. And certain things around me. But you will know for yourself. We'll get there. Let's let's go. We're 33 minutes in and I'm trying to get through this to let you know. The, the, the meat of it, we're halfway through the second page. He says, you will never listen. What does that mean? It means that it's a waste of time for him to come down and keep showing you and showing you if you're only going to do what you want to do anyway so do what you want to do but the ones who have a little faith and the ones that try to follow what I'm going to tell you he is going to show himself to you there is not one person that I've ministered to now I'm not that type I didn't grow up being this type of person anybody that know me will tell you they ain't never seen me like this half of them thought I didn't win crazy but I was crazy before by not trusting it. I had the world in my hands and it didn't mean nothing. I've been giving contracts in, in my heart. It doesn't mean nothing. Money doesn't mean nothing to me. Being successful doesn't mean nothing to me. Friendship doesn't mean nothing to me. All that shit don't mean nothing. I curse because that's just who I am. I feel if I'm blessed by God and he is in me to curse sometimes, then damn it. That's just me. I'm more, more I'm a work in progress. I'm not perfect. We all have sin. My sin is not greater than yours. Yours is not greater than mine. So I'm sitting here smoking tobacco. Your body is a temple. I'm vaping. 
tobacco, which is horrible. But I'm getting, I got off cigarettes, I dropped tabs, I dropped a few other things, which is between me and my father up in heaven, and that's just that. I'm not trying to be perfect or put on a front for nobody. I'm letting you know that God can use me, he can use you. All right. What happens to believers? If you really want to know, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Oh, wait. Oh, okay, that's the, that's the third place. Okay. Yeah, I'm ahead of myself. We're about to end the, the uh, second part in a second. But if you want to know for yourself, there's been two people that, even more than that, but I didn't take on the call. I answered the call. There are two people. One of which, I won't say his name. But I've been knowing this guy for over 14 years. He's been close to my family, very close, very, very close. And I just learned a month ago that he has a tattoo of the Baphomet on his back. He pretty much is in the brotherhood and worships Satan. Now, given my newfound trust in God and discernment, he wasn't able to withhold that from me anymore. Just being around me five minutes, he had to take off his shirt and reveal himself to me. And I let him know flat out then, you know, what was the purpose of it and etc. Now, any chance I was giving to break down God or try to make sense of this for anybody and try to help them believe because as a believer you want to, it's, it's in your heart you feel good sharing this word to people and you know challenging, not challenging but challenging their beliefs and you get to learn that a lot of people close to you don't believe in God and you want to understand why, what point in your brain did you do derail from what I know is true because if I'm believing something that's untrue, I am willing to learn and unlearn. But you got you got to show it to me. Because this shit, this this belief and faith I got didn't come by a pastor or it didn't come by just reading the word. No, it came by proof and living life. And having to come to certain acceptance that not only could I not have made it this far, I could have been taken out plenty of times. You have to go back and be like, damn, okay. So you're pretty strong in your beliefs. And me, I have went to the core to the quantum realm and understand how God could work on a quantum level. So you got to really, you got to really, really. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell me about NASA and all that shit when they tell you that everything is CGI anyway. No pictures of the world that they show you is a real picture. That it's all CGI. NASA admits that. Why would you believe that they're telling you the truth? If somebody photoshops a picture of, of themselves to you on a dating site on the internet and you know that it's photoshopped and they say, hey, can't see you anything other than Photoshop pictures of myself. I can't just snap a selfie. I can't shoot a video like this and say, hey, this is me, boo, boo, boo. It has to be computer generated. You're going to know they're catfish. So why is people letting NASA catfish you? Simple. Look up in the sky. Does we Are we revolving around the sun or does the sun and the moon revolve around us? Put a steel camera up and look it straight up. Sit it there for 24 hours. Then fast for a time lapse and see if things are not circling around us and if we are shot stationary. The Lord say the earth is immovable. This earth don't move. Are we spinning at 25,000 miles? Now, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Look up in the sky. Nigga, the moon right there. Nigga, the sun right there. Nigga, it ain't no billion miles away. It's right there, nigga. Sorry. But a lot of this stuff I had to get through because it had me jacked up. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about aliens and stuff, and really, you should be looking at interdimensional beings. They are on a different level. They are vibrating at a different frequency. That's why they can move around and we don't see them because they are at a higher frequency, but God is waking us to show them to up. Look at the wind. And we are beginning to notice and being awakened to a lot of these things and see and feel and understand a lot of this stuff. We're going to catch up on chapter uh, part three, man. We're going to get from out here. 40-40. Let's stop it at 40.